the most complex challenge when thinking about innovating teaching and learning is being able to effectively design, planning and manage the teaching and learning experiences. Such process is even important when integrating active learning methodologies in subject matter disciplines to develop soft and digital skills. Imagine this scenario. You are teaching engineering in a large classroom of almost 100 students and in the meantime, you want to strengthen collaboration skills of your students with the final aim of improving their employability. You will have to keep in mind two main problems. On one hand, you need to ensure that your students achieve results in terms of knowledge, abilities and competencies specific to your subject. At the same time, you are aware that the job market requires newcomers to be not only able to use their hard skills, but also to collaborate in multidisciplinary groups activities and, for example, respond and manage quick changes autonomously. So it is important to give them, during the higher education path, the chance to develop more complex skills, such as entrepreneurial skills, coping skills, for example, the capacity to deal with a problem in a creative way, learning to learn, and other skills, such as the ability to work in teams, to communicate clearly and effectively, to adapt to different cultural contexts, to solve problems, to manage conflicts, and to show endurance in complicated or stressful situations. That will help a university students make a successful transition from full-time education to entering the labor market. Those skills are very important to manage the rapidly changing context that students will find after leaving our universities and schools, a context which is characterized by weak problems. That means problems that cannot be solved using existing modes of inquiry or decision-making. No final solutions are possible since any resolution generates further issues. Think about conflicts and sustainability issues, for example. It is crucial then, as indicated by Wixson and others, to develop in learners the ability to fuse knowledge from different disciplines and engage with the stakeholders in the process of generating knowledge. Such ability development in education can be promoted through a transdisciplinary model that Earth described as a model that only has fuzzy interfaces with no barriers. The core design and process activities encompass all of the topical areas and some of the topical areas overlap. Communication and interaction is easily accomplished. In the transdisciplinary educational model, students' characteristics, needs, interests and personal learning processes are central to the learning experience. So, keep in mind to engage learners and apply a transdisciplinary educational model as far as possible. Considering this, it becomes clear that a traditional teaching practice based on frontal lessons in which students are not actively engaged in doing things, in affording and solving problems, in collaborating and discussing with others, doesn't respond anymore to all the needs of our society. So if our intention is to transform, even through small steps, our teaching and learning experience in a more active proposal, also the teacher role is going to change. We are basically going from a dimension where the teacher is a speaker to one where the teacher is a designer. These are two very different characters. The speaker has the responsibility to choose the contents and to present them in the most efficient and clear way. The ability to express himself or herself in an efficient and involving way is his or her most important skill. The teacher designer, instead, is a teacher who can design a wider learning experience 
activating students alone or in groups, eventually also using what can be helpful from the digital world to reach the intended learning outcomes. The teacher designer could even create a learning context where the teacher doesn't speak at all, where he simply activates the classroom, giving students the possibility to achieve the intended learning outcomes thanks to the activities and initiatives he has designed. Obviously, this does not mean demonizing the traditional teaching, frontal content transmission will always have an important role in our teaching. The important thing is that the frontal content transmission, when necessary, should happen with a specific function inside a whole teaching project, mixes frontal and active approaches in the most appropriate way. The focus of the teacher will not therefore be limited to carefully selecting the contents, but will have to be open to design an entire learning experience where contents have many different roles within the learning path. Moreover, when designing the experience as a whole, we don't have to consider contents per se, but we need to take into account also their structure, their formats, and their sources. So we can say that contents are part of a wider context where the learning experience happens. In order to visualize this context, we can try to represent it with a network where we can describe the learning experience. In this network, the nodes are the active subjects of the experience who will need to be understood and observed in terms of their characteristics. The link among the nodes are the physical and virtual channels that are used to support the communication among the actors of the learning experience, who will be activated either individually or in groups. And finally, we have the relevant role of the outside world, a usually underestimated pillar in building the intended learning outcomes. Do you see? All aspects we have just seen are strictly linked together to form a very special network able to support the development of an holistic perspective on the learning experience and offer inspiration while redesigning it. In order to reach this point, however, we need to build some good foundations, so we will start from them. Our first step will be reflecting together about the intended learning outcomes we want to achieve at the end of our journey. Then we will think about the assessment strategies we will use to understand if we have indeed been capable of bringing students to the intended learning outcomes we had previously defined. We will also explore the teaching and learning activities that can be designed to support the development of soft and digital soft skills. And finally, methods and point of attention in structuring the evaluation of the experience. Let's start our journey. Mm -hmm.